Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us back here at Sologenics' channel. We have a very special interview for you guys today. We're sitting here with Dr. Oriella Danini, the chief scientific officer of the company, and we're going to dive into her past a little bit. First off, Oriola, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. Perfect, perfect. Well, I'm very glad to have you on. I feel like, again, the best way to start this off would be to paint a picture of your past experiences. Tell us how you wound up in the role you did, and like what really motivates you. Uh, okay, um, that's a pretty big question. So let, let me take a little bit of a step back. Um, I did my undergraduate work at the University of Alberta, where I really focused on chemistry. My father happened to be a chemist, um, and I think that influenced me pretty early on. Um, I actually decided, uh, though, unlike him, where he focused sort of on inorganic chemistry, I, I went more the computational chemistry route. Uh, and the reason for that is I really liked all the different kinds of data and how you could bring it together and try and discover sort of a broader meaning or a broader arc uh, to the potential utility of some of those uh, compounds. And uh, because of that, I went and did my PhD at Queen's University uh, with, uh, with a chemist who was also a neurologist. And that was my first introduction to the interface between chemistry and drug design, which I found uh, really very interesting. And so then I went and did my postdoctoral work at the University of California, San Francisco uh, with Dr. Peter Coleman. And there again, I was really focusing on um, how do enzymes react or interact with small molecules and how can you design drugs, things of that nature. Uh, so that after that, I really decided that I was, uh, I really liked application work. I really like to get towards something that could help other people, um, help society in general. That was my big driver. And so I joined a, a small biotech company uh, based in uh, Vancouver, Canada. That was sort of my first job out of the gate. And uh, I set up sort of a drug development group for them. And we did quite a bit of work on uh, kinases. That program was acquired by another company and I went and joined uh, at that point another company that was just spinning out of the university um, called NMX Pharmaceuticals. And there we really worked on the development of some innate defense regulators. And after quite a bit of work <laughs> with that company, um, we, were, uh, we had advanced it as far as we could. And so it was at that point that we really started to have discussions with Sologenics around that particular molecule. Um, and Sologenics elected to acquire that molecule, which uh, we still have in our portfolio. It's known as a dusquetide or SGX942 for oral mucositis. Okay. And so when they decided to acquire the technology, I was, I was pretty vested in the technology and, and in the belief that that could really help people at the end of the day. And so I, as, as well as the technology moving to Sologenics, I moved with with the technology. So that's um, how I got introduced to Sologenics and, and I've been with them. It's got to be coming up on 10 years pretty soon here. Gotcha. Okay. So that, that's an interesting story. You know, um, so you developed this very specialized set of skills and, and I will in the future ask you to demystify that a little bit too, because a lot of people have no idea what that actually looks like, I'm sure. And then, uh, then you decided to apply it in the most practical, way, which is like, how can we use this to make people's lives better to help the multiple issues that people have throughout it. So, so now you're at Sologenics. Let's get to back to that part of the story. So, so now what do you handle? So, so talk to me about like some of the things that you do there. Um, so it's, it's really um, interesting work, actually. There's a lot of different ways in which you need to take into account the different technologies, the different aspects of science when you're trying to bring um, a drug to a patient uh, to help them at the end of the day. And, and it can span a pretty broad, broad range of things. Um, everything from understanding the chemistry of your molecule and what's the best way to make it so that it's, it's pure and effective um, and consistent every time you make it, um, to testing that compound in um, studies to make sure that there's no unexpected toxicity or anything like that, uh, to running the actual uh, or testing the compound in a clinical study. And then, although I wouldn't, uh, I'm not a physician, I wouldn't be directly interacting with the patients, but certainly I'm involved in evaluating the data that comes in and looking for any trends in that data. So, so that's sort of the breadth of what uh, a chief scientific officer can be involved in. It, it's really any time where you get that crossover between the basic science and the application. Uh, that's, that's the space I tend to like to live in the most. Interesting. So it seems like a pretty wide breadth, though. And I guess I'm just kind of just kind of a, a bonus question here. What are some misconceptions people have about about that role you think that you could clarify on? I know it's a bonus oh. one, so. Yeah, 
<laughs> so, you know, I think people think that jobs are, are fairly uh, tightly defined. I think that that depends a lot on the company and the culture, but in biotech companies, it's pretty well known that we wear a lot of different hats. Uh, and I think uh, for myself, that's really um, one of the other things I really enjoy. It's not just trying to, it's, it's solving the problems and bringing whatever um, information you have to bear to solve that problem without getting overly worried about um, rigid roles and uh, specific technical areas if that makes sense to you. Wonderful. That makes perfect sense. So Oriola, I think you did a great job of painting a picture of how you got involved with what you're on, why you did it, where you are now and what that looks like. But I do implore anyone to ask questions. If they have any questions, I'll be free to send them over to us. Is there anything else you want to add before we go today? Uh, no, thank you very much uh, for the questions. They, they were a pleasant trip down memory lane. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Oriola, look forward to seeing you on here again. Everybody stay tuned for more updates coming soon and have a wonderful day. Thank you.